Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care uh, series. So I wanted to dive into Agentic AI and show you a couple quick examples of it um, and describe it and also show you it in code. And I'll do this in two videos. So this first video, I'm just going to do um, a compound LLM case where you're using multiple LLMs together to create a, a particular workflow and um, and there's reasons you, you uh, do it that way. But let me describe the situation. So let's say you have a new product uh, and you want to write a marketing plan for that product. And you want it to be a really good quality marketing plan, at least the best AI could, could come up with. So imagine you have one um, agent, a writing agent, and this is good at writing marketing plans given some product description. And then you have a critique agent that will read that marketing plan and come up with a critique of it. I should say agent up here. Okay, so you have a, um, a writing agent that's gonna write the plan, then you're gonna send it to the critiquing agent to give a critique of the plan, then you're gonna send it back to the uh, writing agent to write a final version of the plan, and then, um, and then you'll be done, basically. So it's basically three LLM calls compounded together, um, and uh, each of these LLMs plays a different role. Uh, in this case, we're calling them agents, uh, basically. So that's the flow. Uh, I'm gonna go to my computer now, and I'm gonna walk through an example uh, of that with a new product that we're uh, coming out with now. Uh, and you can see how using LLMs together really improves the whole process. Okay, let me show you what that looks like in code. Um, here I'm inside a Jupyter Notebook, which is the uh, tool that's used by data scientists. And this is Python, uh, but it's pretty simple. What I'm doing in the beginning here is just loading up some libraries as well as API keys and stuff like that. Uh, this is the description of the product. So... It's not too large. Essentially, if you're outside of our industry, what it's doing is it's taking um, uh, electronic health record data in one format, which is called FHIR, uh, and converting it to another format, which is called OMOP, which is more used for researchers and, and, that, uh, uh, and that kind of thing. And so this is something that we're uh, launching. So uh, imagine we need a marketing plan for it. So uh, and we want a little bit of help uh, with, with some initial, initial thoughts. So here I'm using the uh, OpenAI's model. You can see the prompt attaches a product description. Please write a draft of the marketing plan. And I stick the product description here inside the prompt. Here it's calling uh, 40 Mini, GPT 40 Mini uh, uh, model. So not the, not the biggest model, uh, whatever, but it does a pretty good job here. Uh, and this is the draft marketing plan. So we'll read this a little bit more carefully uh, later, but you can see it's got Exact summary, objectives, target market, selling props, uh, uh, propositions, marketing strategies, blah, 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 budget, metrics, conclusion. Okay. Uh, this cell is just saving it to um, a PDF file, so I can take a look at it later. Okay. So the next thing uh, we're going to call a different model, actually, a model from XAI, a different company, kind of like OpenAI, but different. Um, and the model that we're calling is called Grok2. Um, and let me just call it and then I'll go back to this prompt. So the prompt is attached is the product description. So I send the description again. Uh, and here is the marketing plan, an initial draft. Please provide a critique of this marketing plan so I can uh, write a better version of it. Uh, so here it's calling this XAI model. It looks like it's calling OpenAI, but that's just the library. OpenAI's library, you can call other people's models for some reason. Uh, so it's calling that model, and it's giving us a critique of that model. And you can see it's not a marketing plan. It's a critique of a marketing plan. So um, here is that it's well-structured. However, here are some improvement areas uh, in the exact summary, strengths, suggestions for improvement in the objective area, in the target market section, in the uh, unique selling proposition section. So you can see for each section, it's going through and giving what it likes and what it uh, thinks should be improved. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Um, I'll save it to PDF so I can read later. Uh, and now let's get a final uh, version based on that critique. So 
here um, I'm back to calling the OpenAI model. Uh, and this is my prompt. So I'm sending all three documents, the original product description, the first marketing plan, and a critique of the marketing plan. And I'm asking the model to write a final version of the marketing plan. So it has gone off and done that. I'm calling the first uh, model again, the 4 mini uh, model. Um, and it has given me a final marketing plan, uh, and which I will read carefully in a moment. Uh, and then I'm going to save it to PDF. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's not too hard. Um, you could do this yourself just by cutting and pasting in chat GPT. But this is just a little sequence that, uh, that I put together in code uh, to do a writing, a critique, uh, and then a rewriting uh, model. So let's uh, pull up the PDF files and take a look at uh, what they look like. Hey there, I'm just popping in to say that I'd love to hear your comments and feedback on this video. I read all the comments, so let me know what you think. Let me know what suggestions you have for my next video by uh, putting in some comments uh, below the line here. Thanks. We have the original and we have the final plan, and I'll just make a few notes. So the final plan is a little bit better, I would say. It's a little bit longer. Um, for instance, in objectives, it mentions long-term vision, target market. It added some demographics here. It had it on unique selling um, proposition, some uh, angles on security and compliance. On, let me scroll aside too. On content marketing. Where's that one? Yeah, content marketing. It changed from just video tutorials to interactive content, video tutorials and Q&A sessions to engage audiences. It added this uh, pay-per-click advertising concept, this targeted advertisement uh, concept. It added health IT organizations to strategic alliances. Interestingly, the budget got a little bit uh, more expensive, so I gotta be careful how many times I run this or I'll run out of money. Um, it uh, broadened the metrics a little bit, social media metrics instead of just website traffic, um, and uh, you know added a few elements to the conclusion about strategic partnerships and those uh, those kinds of things. So I would say it's a notch better, you know, from a marketing plan uh, point of view. Probably worth the critique, worth the. Uh, the revision, so I'm, I'm happy with it. All right, so you can see how it's done, basically, on uh, with code, and it's not too hard. You're basically calling multiple LLMs in a row, but you get a final product that's better than if you just called the LLM once. So the implications of this, I guess starting with the negative, one, it takes longer. So once you start chaining these LLMs together, you're usually talking about an experience that is not a chatbot. So in, in this case, if you were to write a marketing plan as a person, uh, and you'd have people writing this stuff uh, as well, but with AI's help, it might take a week or two anyway. So the fact that the LLM takes a minute or 30 seconds to do a task like this uh, is fine, actually, but it's not a chatbot. It's not a chatbot. Experience so it's using LLMs in a different kind of workflow that takes a little bit more time Costs a little bit more So you're tripling the costs in this case of using an LLM because you're using uh, multiple um, But you have a better outcome So if the uh, accuracy and performance really matters so like you are using it to write a discharge summary for a patient leaving the hospital or these kinds of things and you wish it was better, then you can use an agentic approach like this with multiple LLMs and have a better outcome. And uh, the other thing is you can use it for different purposes other than just critiquing. So a lot of people will check the final results of an LLM against their policy or against their ethics, um, you know, uh, ethics statement or against their brand, their brand to make sure that it's reflective of their organization. 
So you can do revisions and then final checks and updates based on some of these different dimensions that you didn't necessarily tell the LLM about uh, in the beginning of the process. So you can have really a policy checking agent, an ethics checking agent, a brand uh, agent, these kinds of things as part of an LLM flow to give a much better response and a response more attuned to what your, the way your organization wants to project. So I hope that was interesting. In the next video, I'll go into a slightly more complicated version uh, of this, which I call LLMs in a loop. Uh, but until next time, bye. Hey there, I hope you liked this video. Um, I've added a next video at the end of this, so um, so take a look at that if you, uh, if you enjoyed this. And if something resonated with you, please drop uh, a comment um, at, um, uh, down below here. I read every comment uh, myself, and I really appreciate hearing from you. Thanks.